Greetings, everyone. Father Daniel Berica here, rector of Our Lady of the Angels Conventual Church in Scottsdale. Lent is winding down, and I would like to, like to ask us to remember how Lent began with Ash Wednesday in the Gospel that encouraged us to pray, fast, and give alms. So as Lent is winding down, Palm Sunday is this coming Sunday, I'd like to speak to you today about maintaining a regular practice of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving because I can't think of a better way to maintain ongoing conversion. So allow me to touch briefly on each of these. Fasting. Why do we fast? Let me say first that fasting is not a punishment of the body. God created our body, so the human body is good and holy. And Franciscan spirituality sees the goodness in all of God's creation, including our bodies. Fasting is more about regaining control over desires. And again, desires are not bad in and of themselves. Rightly ordered physical desires keep us and our species alive. But so many people struggle to keep their desires in check. Fasting then helps us bring order to our desires and to be mindful of the greatest desire within us, the desire and hunger for God. We know there are so many high rates of addiction to and obsessions with food, alcohol, drugs, sex, pleasures of every kind that are out of control. So weekly fasting can be such a fruitful spiritual practice, part of a prayerful rhythm in our lives. My regular practice is to fast on bread and water each Wednesday and Friday of the week, at least until we gather for our community dinner in the evening. This is a practice I picked up even before I joined the friars from the spirituality that comes from Medjugorje. Now, I'm not always successful in my fasting, but I'm confident that God welcomes every attempt we make to strengthen and deepen our relationship. It also keeps us mindful uh, of our love of God and unites us in solidarity with the two thirds of the world who experience hunger on a regular basis. So it might even activate us to work against hunger. So love of God, love of neighbor. Let's give regular fasting a try and watch it bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Almsgiving. Why are Christians encouraged to give alms and be charitable? Let's consider almsgiving in a broad sense, meaning it is not just giving money or material goods. Almsgiving can also mean giving our time and our talents. So when we give of ourselves in any way, this is almsgiving. Doing so does indeed help others in need, but that's not the principal reason we give alms. I like to put it this way. It is certainly good to give to those in need, but even more so Christians, followers of Christ, the baptized, have a deep-seated desire to give, a need to give. So it's just not a matter of giving of our surplus or of our excess. When we meditate upon the cross, we can see that giving, especially self-emptying, is intrinsic to God's very nature. It's what God does, and we aspire to be like God. So it doesn't matter what or how we give, just that to be in a pattern of giving is to be holy. Again, why would we do this only during Lent? We friars have a funny saying, reflecting on our common life. We say, everything is ours, but don't touch my stuff. <laughs> well, we have stuff, and we too can always have, find something to give. So for me, I'd say my most valuable possession is time. So I try to be very generous with my time. Again, I'm not always successful, but every attempt we make to give ourselves pleases God. Christians have a need to give as God gives. Prayer. There's so much to say about prayer, so I'll keep this short. Prayer is really about maintaining and deepening our relationship with God. Why would we want to, why would we not want to check in with God every single day? I've heard it said that our discipleship is not so much to work with Jesus, but to be with Jesus. And God initiates the prayer that already arises within us. So we just merely respond. You know, the most important thing in our prayer, I think, is to be honest. We are quite accustomed to putting on masks these days for our safety and the safety of others during the pandemic. But when it comes to private prayer, a mask is the last thing God wants us to wear. 
And what I mean by that is that proverbial mask of hiding what we're really feeling, especially raw and unfiltered feelings, just as they are, just as we are. God wants us to come as we are in prayer. And we don't just end there. We let God open the divine heart to us so we can experience the ocean of love and mercy inside. Now, I wanted to speak about a form of prayer called the rosary, uh, which I pray every day. And I call my version the relevant rosary because I apply the mysteries of the rosary to my life. But I'm gonna have to save that for another video because we wanna keep this short. So in conclusion, as the season of Lent winds down, why abandon prayer, fasting, and almsgiving? I encourage you to find regular ways to make these spiritual practices part of the regular fabric of your prayer life. I guarantee that if you are faithful to these throughout the year, you'll be a very different you, a much holier you by Lent next. And the last thing I wanna say is, in addition to everything I've said about each of these, these practices allow us to emulate the self-emptying love of God that is modeled in the incarnation. Today's March 25th and the church celebrates the solemnity of the Annunciation, which is God's willingness to leave the divine comfort zone in order to be one with us and, and to be intimate with us. There is an emptying in that movement. And the second thing is that at this weekend's Palm Sunday Masses, that second reading where you're going to hear is one of the most beautiful passages in all of the New Testament. It's from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, and what we call the kenosis hymn, a Greek word meaning emptying out. That is God in Christ emptied himself, humbled himself, taking the form of a slave because this is what love does. This self-emptying for the sake of love is a pattern of God's. So let's make it our pattern as we seek to follow God through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And may these bear rich fruit for the kingdom of God and help us become, as Father Vincent always reminds us, the holy people of God. Thank you for tuning in today. I look forward to celebrating Holy Week with all of you and to share the solemnity and joy of the Easter season coming afterwards. May the Lord give you peace.